Well, hello everyone, uh, Mayor Rick Crest here, and uh, we're just gonna do a little uh, COVID community update as we used to call them. Now we are in council chambers and there's uh, only two other people here and they're miles apart, so I'm gonna take the mask off so you can uh, hear me better. So certainly we've uh, relied on uh, the copious amounts of information we've been receiving from the uh, province for quite some time, but uh, certainly uh, times have gotten a little more uh, difficult in our community. I detect that um, a lot of people are certainly discouraged and may have hit the wall, so I, I just kind of thought it was time to uh, add a little more clarification, maybe some refocusing, some encouragement, and some optimism, and really to keep the community conversation going. So I hope this will um, start uh, people just continuing to talk to one another and helping each other out. So certainly, while I want to be uh, encouraging, I don't intend to gloss over the very challenging situation that we're in with COVID or to try and ignore the facts or the reality. Indeed, our province, along with many other jurisdictions in Canada, North America, and around the world, are experiencing some of the worst spikes in COVID case counts since the beginning of this pandemic. Right here in Brandon, we too are seeing perhaps the highest number of active cases ever. As of today, Brandon itself had just over 2,000 active cases. And given the new protocols in testing, any positive rapid tests are not included in those numbers. And so consequently, the real number would logically be even higher. The Omicron virus as they predicted, is far more transmissible and widespread than any previous variant. Of course, these are extremely sobering and discouraging things for us all to hear. By this time, most of us, including many of the health experts, would have expected we would have this pandemic well behind us by now. There's no question all of us have had it with this virus. We're sick of masks, we're upset with the impacts on our daily lives. Kids in schools, universities and colleges, along with those who work and teach there, have had enough of the modifications they're required to employ. People in every walk of life have had their jobs impacted, experienced layoffs perhaps, and practically every manner of service provision continues to require special procedures and extra precautions. Seniors and seniors' facilities have been enduring countless ongoing challenges. And topping it all off is our healthcare sector. Never before in modern history have our healthcare providers and facilities been asked to perform such unbelievable volume of services and complications. Apart from treating an unprecedented number of people who are severely ill from the virus, our healthcare sector has also been responsible for the massive operation of testing and contact tracing and managing public health strategies, and even more profoundly, implementing the enormous operation of delivering a mass vaccination of an entire population, not just once, not twice, but now on to our third dose. This might sound routine when you say it fast, but at last count, Manitoba has so far administered over 2.6 million individual doses of vaccine to our citizens. Most of us experience this process. For my own part, all three doses here at our Keystone Center vaccine super site. And every time I've attended, I'm completely amazed and impressed by the logistics, organization, professionalism, and kindness shown by the entire team. If you've had a shot, and 85% of Manitobans have had at least one, stop and think about your own experience, and now imagine that that has happened 2.6 million times in approximately one year. Mind-boggling. So, okay, Mayor, I thought you wanted to be more encouraging. So while the Omicron variant has delivered unprecedented and discouraging case counts, it is truly time to refocus and probably redouble some small individual efforts and perspectives. While Omicron is more transmissible and widespread, 
and our provincial health officials warn that many of us will be exposed, there are some more hopeful elements to our current COVID state. While case counts are incredibly high, the severity, especially in the presence of vaccinations, is significantly lower. Using local numbers, while we have almost 3,500 active cases in all of our Prairie Mountain Health region, 2,000 right here in Brandon, only five people are in intensive care as a result. Now I'm not minimizing those five, and if your loved one or friend is one of those, our hearts go out to you and wishes for full recoveries. However, even in the face of these very high case counts, our incidence of hospitalization or ICU ad admission is far less severe than it had been. Yesterday, Dr. Joss Reimer, medical leave of the vaccine implementation team, provided three very encouraging graphs. And without boring you with too many statistics, they revealed that the incidence of hospitalization, ICU admission, and death among uh, fully vaccinated patients was very dramatically improved. Among those who had received the third dose booster versus unvaccinated persons, you are 26 times less likely to be hospitalized, 139 times less likely to be admitted to ICU, and 63 times less likely to die. Given the fairly high and growing vaccination rate in Manitoba, in our, in our city itself, these are very encouraging statistics. I know many of you are ready to give up. I know all of us wish to be done with this virus, but obviously the virus is not done with us. The spike in case counts would make us all feel hopeless and that we may get COVID in spite of wearing masks and all of the other precautions, so may be asking, what's the point? However, well, sadly, I might still contract COVID or spread COVID while wearing masks and social distancing. We are still less likely to contract it or transmit it. So we're not helpless. We've been practicing these so-called fundamentals for almost two years. Wearing masks, hand sanitizing, social distancing, minimizing contacts, staying home when ill, getting vaccinated, and so on. Are we sick of these precautions? Absolutely. Do they eliminate the risk? Certainly not. But do they minimize some risk? Certainly they do. If not, we would all almost certainly have it by now. But look at it this way. Brandon has had 3,998 cases so far since the very beginning. But we're a health district population of 54,500. Consequently, about 7% of our population has contracted it. If our individual precautions weren't helping, I'm sure, sure most of us would have had it by now, and yet 93% have not. So while the current statistics may be discouraging, we are not helpless. We need to soldier on. Our job, our battle, our individual role against this pandemic is unfortunately not yet done, and we are forced to forge on. This may sound a little hokey and oversimplified, but this is akin to many tasks or situations we've all faced in our daily lives. If you've gone out to dig a hole in your yard, sometimes it goes better than expected. The ground is nice and soft, the task goes smoothly and quickly, and other times the ground is hard, full of rocks and tree roots, and you're picking and scraping and banging away, and it takes much, much longer and far greater effort than you hope for. But you can't quit. The hole won't dig itself. So typically, you just forge on and keep picking away until it's finally done. Well, we're facing one of these very difficult and frustrating jobs with this pandemic. We don't always know what lies ahead. Are we hitting another rock or obstacle? But we have no choice but to forge on. 
This pandemic will end. We will eventually get through this. All storms do end. I don't know when. But what I do know is that the resiliency of the human spirit will overcome this. Apart from everything our governments and healthcare providers are doing, significantly the solution still resides with each and every one of us. We need to stick with our own individual precautions and fundamentals, help each other, do our own small part, and most of all, stay kind and keep positive. I am convinced we will come out the other side. One day when we look back at all of this, let's make sure we can define ourselves as having individually done the best we can, maintaining a fabulous measure of civility, kindness and cooperation, and demonstrating the largest worldwide outpouring of collaboration and human achievement in history. Well, I hope we can all rally together, individually do our own part in this emergency, through every personal precaution we can employ, stay positive, optimistic, and kind until we overcome this pandemic, and look back not on history's biggest disaster, but on humans' finest hour. Thank you, stay safe, stay strong, be kind.